We have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Bananas are widely grown in Kenya, not only as a staple food, but also as a source of income generating activity. We meet a farmer in Krinyaga County who is not only growing bananas, but is also using a new twist of technology. Meet Helen Wanjiku, a widow who lives on our one-acre farm at Gashada in Grinyaga County. Her main enterprise on the farm is growing tissue culture banana, and she's quite an expert on it. She explained the steps she takes to produce good tissue culture banana plants for sale. When doing banana macropropagation, you go to the farm and get the small banana which we call the sword which is next to the mother. You dig out the banana until you reach where they join up with the mother and cut it off. From there you have the boiling water. You peel off your banana and put it there in water for 30 seconds. After sterilizing the stem in boiling water, she cuts the stem down until she has a small piece she needs. She plants this part of the stem in a tunnel with sterilized soil and sawdust and waits for it to shoot. Oh, she's definitely the expert. We are definitely not here to teach her about bananas. But there are so many other things we could teach her about. Helen has two dairy cows and a calf. In addition, she keeps goats and grows maize, coffee and various vegetables for sale and home consumption. Helen started serious farming after she became the sole breadwinner of her family. But recently, she has experienced a lot of problems and turned to us for some expert advice. So, with that good start, we set the tent up and we got down to business. Helen, thank you so much for welcoming us to your home. Uh, I was after asking you, um, have you always been a farmer or do you do something else? I've been a farmer throughout. For how long have you lived here? For 25 years. And you've been farming for all that time? Yes. Oh, really? Mm. What do you have on your shamba? Right now I have bananas, coffee, maize, sweet potatoes, Irish potato, arrowroots and beans. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you do farming as a business? Yes. I does it as business. Are you getting good profits from it? Yes. <laughs> you are happy? So happy. Uh -huh. uh. I see you also got cows. Are they doing well? Not really. What's the problem? Reduction of milk. Reduction of milk. Yeah, at the first I was getting 15 liters, but now I'm getting in between 5 liters and 6 liters. What? From 15 liters to 5 liters? Yeah. So, so how are your crops doing, Helen? They are doing well, but I'm overcoming some problems because there are some of diseases like pests. Like now you can see the COVID is already has been got by reef rust. Uh, you don't have to worry. We've got experts for you and we'll see where we can help you so you become truly shaped up. I'll be very happy Thank you so to much. be a very good farmer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Helen, like most farmers, uses fertilizer on her shamba. But unfortunately, not all her crops are thriving. They are under attack from pests and diseases. But without knowing the condition of our soil, she might be applying too much, too little, or even the wrong fertilizer, or growing the wrong crops. The first thing to do in any farm is to test the soil. Soil Cares was here earlier to take some samples and the expert is back with the results. So Tim, before you tell us the results, Yes. Let's understand what she has been using. I've been using DAP, mm -hmm. CN, mm -hmm. 
17, 17. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Yara Mira series. Mm. Okay, so Tim, yeah. what do you say? Yeah, she has been on the right path, but the amounts applied maybe will determine. But from the results, let us look at the results first. Her soil acidity, uh, the pH is okay for maize growing. Soil fertility, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and micronutrients. He has only low nitrogen. Test your soil at least every two years. Tests cost less than a bag of fertilizer. And with the advice you get from your farm, you can increase your yields each season with a very good profit. A soil test will also tell you what crops you can and cannot grow on your farm. Other suitable crops you can grow on your farm include tubers, grains, and legumes. So which means your farm is good for all crops all round. Being a member of a farmer group is a very good way to share problems and learn new things. Helen belongs to a group of women farmers, but the group has been having some problems. So we invited Millicent Liani to teach her how she can manage her group better. It is known as VSROE. Mm -hmm. That means Village Savings Loans Association. The money we contribute is loaned to women mm -hmm. according to how much you need. Mm -hmm. And yet we still have some problems because we get some individuals when road with the money, mm. one moves and it goes. Oh, they don't pay. Yeah, wow. they are not able to pay. When you come rates, give us 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. When you don't come, you, if you're absent, you give us 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. When we come to claim for that, if I we get excuses. A good group should not be such a big group. They really advise farmers to have a group of like 10 to 20 people who are easy to manage. If a member misses like three times, giving excuses and even not paying the fine, such a member should be dismissed from the group. Looking at issues to do with the gender, the gender dynamics, we find that women have been marginalized. Women are great farmers, as I said. There are people who know how to manage resources when it comes to money, when it comes even to agricultural produce. So we really advise women who are strong and who are hardworking like you. So like in such groups, they should be gender specific. If you have a group, a group that just is composed of just women who are known to each other, such that there's that mutual trust. What other advice would you give her as a farmer in business? Okay. A farmer in business, I would really advise you to really hold on in the group. In the groups you find that if maybe an organization comes or maybe you have a project, you're able to access assets and even inputs at a cheaper price other than assessing those inputs or, or, or even those assets as an individual. Maybe in terms of knowledge exchange, within the groups I could be having some knowledge or information where there are better markets for a product other than being an individual. People will sort out for information and it will help the group and you'll be able to grow. With that, you'll even be increasing your food security in the household. It will be fine. Poverty levels will reduce. And another thing with the groups, you find that when you're acting as a farmer alone, you have these middlemen's, the agents who come around. They can even come to your farm and talk around with you. They want maybe these bananas. They want maybe these goats. They'll go away with it. But when you, when you are in a group, I'm sure you are able to come up together with source for better markets out there and will not be exploited by the middlemen. There are many services which groups can access, including advice, help with technology, banking, loans and marketing. There are special services for groups of women and youth, like the Wells of Fund for Women and Youth and special financial services for women. We decided to take Helen to see a group that was working well just near her village. Welcome to Embu Climate Action Team. It's a group of youth and locally we are known as CATS. With what we deal with is uh, trying to engage the youth in methods of farming and that is for example like the greenhouse. Here we have two greenhouses and I'm going to like show you and uh, tell you what we do with our greenhouses. 
the Climate Action Team are using climate change adaptation advice to farm vegetables successfully. They have some good advice on what to do as a group. As a group, I would like to advise that uh, sit down, then list down all the things you want to do. Then you have to prioritize which one you think you're going to do in your uh, as a in in, uh, in terms of your best. Then which one do you think you have no no knowledge about? So what you have knowledge about and you think you can do your best, that will be the basis of what really you should venture into as a group. So you have to set your plans right, know where your market is. Apart from knowing who you're going to supply to, you have to know where like you're going to get the inputs, the fertilizer or the pesticide that you're going to use. Okay. It is good to see the young advising the old and they have some great ideas for Helen to take back to her group. <laughs> Helen had told us how her milk production had drastically reduced. So we decided to call on Dr. Kivuitu from Unga Farm Care. After a quick inspection of the cows and the shed, he identified the following problems. Mr. Kivuitu, before we start talking about feeds, let's talk a little about the cattle shed. What do you think of it? Number one I've, I've seen with the cow shed uh, is that uh, the sleeping area or the resting area is not comfortable for the cow. If this cow is not comfortable, it won't give you what you deserve from that cow or what you expect. Um, I've seen uh, there was that wood shavings you had initially used and that's normally the best. What we need to be doing is to be changing these wood shavings. I've checked on the roofing of the sleeping area. Yeah, uh, The high on sheets are torn due to rust and that's where when it rains you get rainwater seeping in into the sleeping area. Something else about the, the cow shed is about the feeding area. It's open to the sun and it's also open to the rain. So wherever you have uh, some feet here and it rains, uh, the rain contaminates the, the feed which, which has remained here. So if we uh, can get um, a roof at the feeding area, we'll be able to protect rainwater from getting into the, into the feeding traps. Now, Helen, tell the expert, how many liters of milk do you get? I get in between five and six liters per day. Per day? Yes. From one cow? Yes. Is no. that good enough? No. That one is not good enough from this good-looking cow, mm -hmm. which has a potential of giving more milk if taken good care of. Okay, what should Helen do? The highest percentage of milk production and health of the cow comes from what you feed the cow. For this cow which is producing milk, you need to supplement the feed you are giving it with the Fugo dairy milk. It is recommended for every two liters of milk produced over five liters then give your cow one kilo dairy meal per day to supplement the normal fodder. So, if your cow start to produce seven liters of milk a day, you supplement the fodder with one kilogram of dairy meal. If your cow produces nine liters a day, you supplement with two kilograms of dairy meal and so on. This will increase milk production. Helen, um, how much is a, a kilo of uh, milk around here? 45 shillings. If you supplement every two liters of milk with one kilo of dairy milk, it will mean this cow will give you two kilos. That's two liters of milk, each at 45 shillings. It will be 90 bob you are getting from this milk. And the two kilos you are supplementing with only one kilo of Fugo dairy milk and one kilo going at 26 shillings, it will mean you are inputting 26 shillings on the supplement to give you 90 shillings. Following the expert advice, we got to making changes and improving the cow shed. Mm -hmm. 
lots of work has been done Naomi. Yeah, yeah, yes, and I think it's time to take a break. Oh yes, there's still more to come right after the break. Coming up, will the family see the light? Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are still here in Krinyaga County where there is lots of work to be done. So let's get working. It's a new day on Helen Wanjiko's farm and there is still a lot of expert advice to give. We have tested the soil and advised on what can be done about climate change. And a top animal expert has shown her how to make her dairy farm more productive. But there's still a lot more to do. We need to look at the next of our problems. Light. <coughs> Helen is a fan of solar lights. And she knows how much a family can save by using solar instead of kerosene. She likes solar lights so much, she has become an agent for D-Light solar lamps in her area. But there is a new product from D-Light that she has not yet tested. Martin from D-Light is here to upgrade her. Martin, I'm sure you'd be happy to know that uh, Helen has been using D-Light lamps. I was very delighted when, you saw when I walked in yeah. and I saw D-Light on the roofs. <laughs> it, it was very warm. I saw the big smile. Yes. Now, Helen, how long have you been using D-Lights? Two years. Two years? Yes. And how has the experience been? It has been so nice because it has been helping my daughters to do studies in the evening. Yes. And they have also improved. Ah, oh, in the education. Yes. Uh, now they know they're number one in their class? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. What were you using before, remind me? I was using hurricane lamps. Hurricane lamps? Yes. Mm -hmm. Using paraffin? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was it costly? So much. Mm -hmm. uh, and now? I'm saving a lot of money from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, even I had a problem. Mm -hmm. I had an allergic problem because of the paraffin. Okay. But now the problem is gone. It's mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. That makes me very happy because yes. those are the problems that we are trying to solve. Mm -hmm. That people do not have to keep spending money on uh, kerosene, mm -hmm. that they can use that money in other ways to improve the lives of their families. Mm -hmm. What have you got for Helen? So what I have eh, is a D-Light solar home system. And this one comes with a larger panel which we will fix on the roof so that it's always charging. And then all that electricity is stored in the battery unit, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So that's the battery unit. And then from there, at the very top, you can see where you connect the, uh, the lamps. So I have two lamps here. And each lamp comes with a wall-mounted switch, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we are going to fix, two of them. And you have the opportunity to even increase later on, because of the savings that you're making, you can increase to a third and a fourth one, oh, right? And not only that, where have you been charging your phone? At the shopping center, Moroni. Okay. And how much does it cost you to do that? 10 shillings. And does it cost you anything to go there? Yes, 50 shillings for Boda Boda. Okay, mm. so it takes you 50 shillings just to get there, mm. then 10 shillings to charge the phone. Mm. Now I want us to solve that problem as well. This lantern comes with mobile charging. So all you do is connect that here and connect this to your phone. And that's it. You will never think about going to the town center again to charge your phone. That is very great for that's me and my family. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. very <laughs> nice. Martin, let's go fix this. Let's go and fix this. All right. Okay. Seeds and chemicals are a problem for farmers, and they are always around at the start of the season. It is difficult to know when a chemical is fake or not. So, we asked the expert from Pest Control Products Board, PCPB, to come 
so Helen could tell him some more. I heard, but I really never knew which chemical to use. I just went in the shop and bought. Oh, that is why the disease is already inside the farm. When you have already noticed a disease in your farm, first you have to identify the disease itself. Once you've known your disease, you are now required to go to the licensed Anglovet outlet from where you'll be able to ascertain from the label whether what you are buying is actually for the control of the disease as identified in the farm. Where you also buy your chemicals matters. There are some shops which are not specialized for selling pesticides and these have been noticed to be the main outlet for counterfeit products. What is a counterfeit? It is an imitation of the right product. So when you buy from that unauthorized outlet, you are likely to be using the wrong chemical or you should be using nothing. So how can you tell the difference between a counterfeit and the real thing? One, it is difficult for a farmer to distinguish between a counterfeit and a genuine product. The reason being the level of technology has uh, made it so easy for the counterfeiters to make even better artworks than the, the genuine product. However, all is not lost. Uh, if you move to a particular shop and you are interested in buying a product, if you see any slight deviation from what you know, please avoid. Any slight deviation because these products are supposed to be sold the way they are. The package is approved by us and nobody can change a pack. You can never get two packs of the same product in the market at the same time. Two, whenever you purchase a pest control product, ensure that you carry a receipt. In this way, after usage of the product, in case there was a problem, if you report to the authorities, in this case, the pest control products board, we have offices all over, or through the Ministry of Agriculture, it is possible to follow the case backward. So Helen, you've heard it? Yeah? Yes. That as, as much as you, they all look the same, they're very different, you know, and you have to know where to buy. Yes. It's about where to buy. Yes. Yeah? Thank you so much. Helen, tell me, where do you get most of your information on agriculture from? From the people of the ministry. From the neighbors, what was this? Helen had some problems with all these places. The ministry is hard to get to and can be unavailable. And the neighbors sometimes don't give the right information. There was one time when my cow had a problem. Yes. It uh, had this swollen the, in the stomach. Uh -huh. So I was told to take ash mixed with the water. Yes. And it ended up by dying. Now. Do you have your phone? Yes. Hmm. On the end of that line, there is an expert. Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. Helen needs to subscribe to Shamba Shepap's expert advice service, the iShamba. This will send her expert advice when she needs it. And she can even call an expert when she needs extra help. All she needs to do is send the word join to 21606 and follow the instructions. That's very good for okay, me. Okay, good. It has been a wonderful shape-up, and we must be off to our next farm. Shamba Shape-Up is online. To learn more about today's topics, or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com, select the episode, and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape-Up, to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter, at Shamba Shepherd. 